Hey everyone, I'm Carmel. And I'm Raya. And today we have come to show you a video that we've created with music and audio called... The Covenant of God. The Covenant of God. He is the glory of glories. This is that which hath descended from the realm of glory, uttered by the tongue of power and might, and revealed unto the prophets of old. We have taken the inner essence thereof and clothed it in the garment of brevity, as a token of grace unto the righteous, that they may stand faithful unto the covenant of God, may fulfill in their lives his trust, and in the realm of spirit obtain the gem of divine virtue. Now, why is there a covenant? To understand the covenant, you must understand why you were created. The created? can never know his creator. As man was created in God's image, God bestowed on man his highest creation, the bounty of loving and knowing him. As man was the created and God the creator, there was no way for man to know God except through his divine avatars or manifestations, prophets, if you like. As a loving father, God having created us in his likeness, promised that he would never leave us alone as his children, his creation. Not having the capacity to know God, the Father, the Creator, made a covenant with man that he would always be there to guide us and promised to always send us one who would teach us. The covenant is to guide us along the straight path and to keep us unified. He kept that promise by sending us teachers from time to time. What is the covenant? The covenant's a promise, it's an agreement, it's a commitment, a contract, a way of life. When God gives us blessings and we agree to perform in a certain way, a covenant is formed. The covenant was created for the unity of mankind. An agreement with God through his manifestations with mankind. The first part is that God would send another messenger after this one. That he would never leave us alone that he would always send us messengers to guide us. Religion is eternal in the past, eternal in the future, and the same religion of God. With the coming of each successive religion, a power is released in the world for man to discover the sciences and arts in order for him to overcome his ignorance. God's promise fulfilled. For Noah, this rainbow that you see here was a sign of and symbol of God's universal promise to man that he would never again destroy all flesh. For Abraham, God's promise was fulfilled. God's promise to Abraham was that his descendants would become a great nation. For Krishna, God's promise was fulfilled again. Whenever Dharma declines and the purpose of life is forgotten, I manifest myself on earth. I am born in every age to protect the good, to destroy the evil, and to re-establish Dharma. For Moses, <laughs> it was fulfilled again. Moses and the Ten Commandments given him by God created a timeless religious covenant that is binding on Christmas. Moses said, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you. And for Zoroaster, God's promise fulfilled. Zoroaster prophesied a series of spiritual guides, the most important of whom would be Sao Shiant or Shah Bahram, world savior. And it goes on and on. For Buddha, there is no distinction between any of the Buddhas, for all Buddhas are exactly the same as regards Buddha's Dhammas. For Christ, if you believed Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote of me. That's what Jesus Christ said. Now for Mohammed, and that given to all prophets from their Lord, we make no difference between one and another of them. Then we get closer to present time. The Bob, or the Gate, born in 1819, 
But Bob wrote many times to his followers to follow him whom God shall make manifest. And that ended up being Baha'u'llah, the glory of God, born in 1817. Baha'u'llah wrote, In this most mighty revelation, all the dispensations of the past have attained their highest, their final consummation. He further says that should the greatness of this day be revealed in its fullness, every man would forsake a myriad lives in his longing to partake. Though it be for one moment of its great glory, how much more this world and its corruptible treasures. Baha'u'llah's Covenant Baha'u'llah's covenant guarantees both unity of understanding of his faith, fundamental doctrines, and actualization of that unity in the Baha'i community's spiritual and social development. It is distinguished by its provision for authentic interpretation of the sacred text and for an authorized system of administration at the apex of which is an elected legislative body empowered to supplement the laws revealed by Baha'u'llah. To be faithful to the covenant of Baha'u'llah is to be obedient to him as God's messenger. The Lesser Covenant The Lesser Covenant is our commitment to the last manifestation that we would accept his appointed successors who will lead the followers until the next messenger comes. When the guardian died, you might think that there was no other successor. But Baha'u'llah had written many years before that the Baha'i should elect the Universal House of Justice. This is the Supreme Governing Body of the Baha'i Faith. The Power of the Covenant the power of the covenant, in the words of Abdu'l-Baha, says that it moves the hearts, dashes into a thousand pieces all the forces of opposition. It creates new spiritual worlds. When people attack the faith, we call it covenant breaking. That could include attempting to stop the faith from growing. You could use newspapers, media, internet, books, and imprisonment in attack of the followers, like what happened to Baha'u'llah and Abdu'l-Baha. Abdu'l-Baha asks us to make the feet firm at the time when these trials transpire and demonstrate forbearance and patience. You must withstand them with the utmost love and kindness. 